Merci d'être venu. Ça n'a pas bon sens. Ça n'a pas bon sens. Après huit ans du Justin Trudeau, les Canadiens ne peuvent pas payer leurs factures pour les lo le logement, la nourriture et l'énergie. Après huit ans du Justin Trudeau, le coût de logement a doublé, le coût de la loyer a doublé, le coût des paiements mensuels moyennes pour une hypothèque ont doublé. Pourquoi? À cause des déficits inflationnistes qui augmentent les taux d'intérêt et à cause des bureaucraties qui empêchent la construction des nouvelles maisons. Après huit ans de Justin Trudeau, la nourriture augmente en prix depuis, euh, de, le plus rapidement depuis 40 ans. Ça n'a pas de bon sens. Les mères monoparentales ne peuvent pas acheter la nourriture pour ses enfants. Euh, il y a un sur cinq Canadiens qui manquent des repas parce que c'est trop cher de manger. Ça n'a pas bon sens que les Canadiens et les Canadiens doivent, souff doivent souffrir à cause des taxes sur l'essence qui augmentent le prix à la pompe. Ça n'a pas de bon sens. Donc, le gouvernement promet un nouveau budget. Ce budget doit renverser les déficits, taxes et impôts inflationnistes, inflationnistes que Justin Trudeau a imposés sur les Canadiens. Ça doit être un budget qui ramène le gros bon sens chez nous, qui ramène des plus grands chèques de paie chez nous, qui ramène des prix plus bas chez nous et qui ramène des maisons et appartements abordables chez nous. Comment? Les conservateurs proposent trois choses pour le budget, trois revendications pour les gens qui travaillent fort. Premièrement, il faut mettre fin à la guerre contre le travail. Maintenant, une mère monoparentale qui gagne 60 000 par année, avec trois enfants, qui gagne une autre dollar, elle perd 80 sous dans la réduction de, de prestations et des taxes. Nous, les conservateurs, revendiquons que le budget réduise les impôts et les autres pénalités. On a besoin d'un système qui récompense le travail et encourage davantage de travail parmi nos gens. Deuxièmement, ramenant des prix plus abordables chez nous en éliminant les taxes, impôts et déficits inflationnistes. Le déficit, les déficits de 500 milliards de dollars de Justin Trudeau augmentent l'inflation et les taux d'intérêt. Il faut contrôler les dépenses. Les conservateurs revendiquent des contrôles sur les dépenses en éliminant le gaspillage sur les consultants à haut prix, euh, coupent d'autres gaspillages dans le gouvernement et mettent en place une li limite légale euh, pour euh, contrôler, contrôler les dépenses. Ça va nous permettre d'éliminer les déficits inflationnistes pour réduire l'inflation et les taux d'intérêt. Troisièmement, ramenant des de logements plus abordable chez nous, en éliminant la bureaucratie qui empêche la construction des nouvelles maisons. Les gardiens de privilèges dans les gouvernements municipaux, gouvernements municipaux empêchent la construction. Le gouvernement fédéral envoie l'argent pour l'infrastructure à ces grandes villes. Il faut attacher des conditions, oui, des conditions. Si des politiciens Provinciaux, excusez-moi, des politiciens municipaux empêchent la construction, ils devraient recevoir moins de l'argent pour l'infrastructure. Mais s'ils accélèrent, accélèrent euh, la construction des maisons, ils devraient recevoir davantage. Donc, on devrait encourager la construction. En fait, il faut ramener le gros bon sens chez nous. Le gros bon sens, des chèques de paie plus grands qui récompensent le travail, plus de logements abordables, moins d'inflation. Celles sont les revendications euh, du Parti conservateur. Un, on veut un pays qui fonctionne pour ceux et celles qui ont fait le travail. Les travailleurs, d'abord et avant tout, c'est ça la priorité des conservateurs. Thank you. Now in English. There's no common sense. After eight years of Justin Trudeau, inflation is rising faster than at any time in 40 years. 
because of the half trillion dollars of inflationary deficits he has piled on. Those deficits increase both inflation and interest rates, which have caused monthly mortgage payments to skyrocket for everyday Canadians. His carbon tax makes food, gas, and groceries more expensive, which means that now one in five Canadians are skipping meals because they cannot afford the price of food. Nine in 10 young people say they'll never be able to afford a home because inflationary deficits drive up interest on mortgage payments and local bureaucracies block construction. Everything feels broken. Most of all, the deal is broken. The deal that if you work hard, you get a house, good food, a good living, and a good life. That deal has been broken, and Justin Trudeau is the one who broke it with his inflationary policies. The budget is coming. The Conservatives want the budget to make Canada again a country that works for the people who've done the work. We have three demands. One, bring home powerful paychecks with lower taxes that reward work. We have a war, and wor war on work in this country. A single mom earning $60,000 a year who has three kids earns another dollar. She loses 80 cents in income tax, payroll tax, and benefit clawbacks. That punishes work. The people who do the nation's work are punished more and more each day in this country. We wonder why we have a labor shortage. You punish work, you get less work. Well, conservatives want this budget to reform and cut taxes and clawbacks so people bring home more of each dollar they earn so that hard work once again pay, pays off. Two, we need to bring home lower prices by ending the inflationary carbon tax hikes and deficits. That means capping spending. We, we, we propose cutting back on high-priced consultants that now cost $1,400 for every household in Canada, cutting back on bloated waste in government, and bringing in a legal dollar-for-dollar dollar cap on, on spending. Every dollar of new spending in this budget should be matched with a dollar of savings so that taxpayers and the economy can catch up with the exorbitant cost of government under Justin Trudeau. Getting rid of these taxes and deficits will lower the cost of gas, heat, and groceries, and will bring down interest rates so that Canadians can afford their mortgage payments once again. Third, bring homes people can afford by removing the government gatekeepers, freeing up land, and speeding up building permits. Right now, Canada is ranked 64th in the world for the time it takes to get a building permit. We have the fewest houses per capita in the G7, even though we have the most land to build on. No wonder our housing uh, affordability crisis is the fifth worst on planet Earth. Countries uh, with much less land, more people, and more money are paying less for, for real estate. Why? Government gatekeepers prevent us from building. Government gatekeepers add as much as $600,000 to a unit of housing in Vancouver, and about $350,000 to the cost in Toronto. Now, these gatekeepers are local, but the federal government sends them infrastructure money, and it's time to crack down on the gatekeepers. Enough sending big fat checks to municipal, municipal politicians who are causing homelessness and poverty by blocking home building. Our conservatives want financial penalties for big cities that stand in the way of construction and building bonuses in the form of higher infrastructure transfers to those cities that get out of the way and let houses get built. Remove the gatekeepers, build more homes, bring homes that people can afford. In essence, conservatives want a country that works for the people who've done the work. The senior who can't pay her heating bill because of the rising carbon tax. The 30-year-old who's working hard and doing everything right but loses his paycheck to higher taxes and therefore cannot afford a home. The people who honored their end of the deal, got a job, worked hard, contributed, but are living in poverty. It is for them that we fight, that those who work hard, pay their taxes, and play by the rules. It is the common sense of the common people, united for our common home, Canada. Your home, my home, our home, Let's bring it home. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to say a quick word. This is my shadow minister of finance for all who don't know, but you all should know because he's the best shadow minister of finance uh, around. A businessman, uh, a hard worker, trained in finance, uh, and a strong voice for the people of Calgary and all of Canada. Fire away. Thank you, leader. As the leader said, 
Canadians, hardworking Canadians, have kept up with their end of the deal. Justin Trudeau has not only not kept up with his end of the deal, but he's broken the deal. This is forcing one in five Canadians to skip meals. 1.5 million Canadians who are visiting a food bank in a single month. In my riding, I remember a single mom when I was door knocking who had a for sale sign on her house. And when I went up to the door and spoke with her, she just was laid off from her energy sector job. And she showed me her energy bill. And she said, I've been heating my home for years. Why am I being forced to pay for something I've been doing normally for many years before. And she was talking about the job killing, economy killing carbon tax. And because of Justin Trudeau's deficit spending and for spending more money than all prime ministers before him combined, she's had to put her house up for sale because she just cannot afford to feed her kids and to pay her mortgage payments any longer. This is the Justin Trudeau, this is Justin Trudeau's Canada after eight years of his failures. My family came here with very little. And I'm very proud to be with a leader who came up from very little. But this country gave families like his and mine and many others an opportunity. That opportunity after eight years of Justin Trudeau is lost. Where now we see one in five newcomers want to pack up and leave. And the number one cause of that is the high cost of living. Justin Trudeau's deficits are not only driving away talent, but they're making more and more people go into food banks. We just saw a Mississauga food bank had a 41% increase in usage year over year, just in January alone. This is Justin Trudeau's Canada. Justin, needs to, Justin Trudeau needs to live up to his end of the deal while hardworking Canadians continue to live up to theirs. Let's bring it home. Can you, can you address the um, Inflation Reduction Act from President Biden? They're pumping more than 300 billion into the economy. What do you think a Canadian government needs to do to compete in this budget? Uh, we need to open Canada up for business, to bring home more of our mines, our manufacturing, and our jobs back to this country. The biggest obstacle is that you can't get anything built in Canada. We're ranked 64th in the world for the time it takes to get a building permit. By the government's own admission, it takes up to 25 years to get a permit to build a mine. We've been talking about, you want to talk about the green economy. What do you need? Minerals, lithium. 2021, we mined not a single tablespoon of lithium in Canada for electric car batteries, even though we have the sixth biggest supply. Why? Because it takes forever to get a permit to dig a mine in this country. I spoke to First Nations leaders from the Ring of Fire in Northern Ontario. They were telling me they've spent $50 million to get a permit for a highway to get to the eventual mine. Forget the, the permits for the mines themselves. You know how much, how, how much of that highway's been built? Not a single meter. I asked them if the shovel was in the ground, and they said the snow shovel is in the ground, because they have snow yeah, roads. If you want to build, you know, you need to get out of the, get the government gatekeepers out of the way to bring home our mines, our factories, and our jobs back to this country. That's the biggest obstacle to this. The second thing is we need to get the, uh, punishing taxes off of the backs of our uh, industrial production. We reward, we give money to businesses to ship our jobs and our technology to other countries under Justin Trudeau, but we punish those that set up shop and bring home jobs here. Let's do exactly the opposite. Poly of government, we'll get rid of the red tape and the gatekeepers, and we'll make reform the taxes to bring home billions of dollars of mines, of resource development, and other production right here in Canada. Can I ask you about bail reform? Can I ask you about bail reform? The justice ministers on Friday, provincially, federally, came to some agreement about moving ahead with bail reform. Um, what would it take for a conservative? What do conservatives want to see in any bail reform package that Minister Lametti might present? Well, Trudeau's broken bail policy, catch and release policy, is causing a wave of crime right across this country. In Vancouver, the same 40 people were arrested 6,000 times. 40 people, 6,000 arrests. That's 150 arrests per person per year. The criminals laugh at the cops. When they get arrested, they say, hey, it's morning, I'll see you at noontime, because they know they'll be back out on bail because Trudeau passed a bail reform that allows criminals same-day release even when they have a long rap sheet. So here's the, here's the deal. We need common-sense bail reform 
that says that multiple repeat violent offenders who are newly arrested should stay behind bars until their trial, and if convicted, their sentence is complete. That would massively reduce crime. Trudeau has, after eight years, caused a 32% increase in violent crime, a 92% increase in gang killings. This is all the result of his catch and release policies for repeat violent offenders. Let's crack down on the repeat violent offenders who are causing the vast majority of mayhem in our streets, and let's bring home safe streets for Canadians. Yeah, Holly, do you think that the first six percent tax goes into effect on all alcohol? Yes. The finance committee has already said they want this frozen. The beer industry is saying it's going to be damaging for their sector. Do you have any confidence, and do you think the government will listen? And why do you think that this should be scrapped? Conservatives believe that now is the worst possible time to raise any taxes. Trudeau's already caused 40% highs in 40-year highs in inflation. Canadians cannot afford to pay any more. They're paying more for heat, housing, and energy. It's almost enough to drive a man to drink, but Trudeau wants to tax you more for that too. We're calling on the, the, the Trudeau government to cancel all of its planned tax increases. It's planned tax hikes on energy through the tripling of the carbon tax, should be cancelled. His planned tax increases on alcohol should be cancelled. And his, incre his tax increases on paychecks should be cancelled. Let's br bring home lower prices and powerful paychecks. So Canada, do you believe Canada, is Canada spending too much on Ukraine right now, in your opinion? I think we need to get results for our money. And uh, we, we, we support uh, an end to Russia's un illegal and un unjustified in invasion. Um, what the problem with this government is they, uh, they, they, it's not that they don't spend enough, it's that they don't achieve enough results for the spending they do. They spend too much on back office bureaucracy and not enough on frontline military equipment. Can you yeah. clarify on the, on the Inflation uh, Reduction uh, Act? Uh, this gentleman here, and then You're we'll saying spend a dollar, cut a dollar for every dollar spent. Yeah. What would you cut? You have alluded to some things, but where would the cuts come from? Well, I would uh, defund uh, the CBC. I would get rid of uh, a lot of the spending on the high-priced consultants. We're now spending $22 billion on high-priced consultants. That's 1400 bucks for every Canadian. Trudeau has doubled the budget for consultants, as one example. Um, and, uh, you know, we have to find another example. Um, we're, he's going to be spending $5 billion going after people who own, who are licensed, registered rifle owners, hunters, going into their, trying, knocking on their doors and trying to confiscate property that they legally acquired, that money should go into frontline border services to protect against the smuggling, which is actually causing the violent crime. So those are some prime examples of how we can uh, reallocate money away from waste and put it on the front lines. Bring home savings, bring home lower costs, bring home powerful paychecks. Last question. To be clear, on the Inflation Reduction Act, it, it seems quite universally stated within the finance world and yeah. within government that the federal government needs to put tens of billions of dollars on the table to ensure Canada can continue to compete against the 300 billion plus that Biden has put on the table. Do you agree that the federal government should be putting checks on the table to keep business here? You can't, you can write a big check, but if the mine or the factory doesn't get a building permit, it won't happen. And that's the problem. It's the government gatekeepers that stand in the way of our businesses. For example, we could have right now 15 LNG export terminals to deliver clean, emissions-reducing energy to both Asia and to Europe. It's not because of the absence of government checks that they didn't get built. All of those were, would have been privately financed. Why didn't they get built? Because Trudeau won't grant building permits to LNG liquefaction facility. No, the context is actually so more, yes no it's, it's even more urgent that we get speed up building permits for major energy producing projects here in Canada. Trudeau had 15 of these LNG plants on his desk when he became prime minister. Zero have been completed because of his government gatekeeping. And as a result, Europe has to rely on Putin for its energy and Asia has to burn dirty coal into our atmosphere. I will, a poly of government will quickly approve LNG and other related projects so that we can ship Canadian energy to Asia and shut down dirty foreign coal. We can ship Canadian energy to Europe and turn dollars for dictators into paychecks for our people. Let's bring it home. Thank you.